Tokenmetrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. Welcome to the Market Update Show. I'm your host, Bill Noble. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you need to make money in crypto, subscribe to this channel. Turn on alerts so you know when we're going live. We have a special stream to announce at the end, so don't go anywhere. All right, <clears throat> let's welcome everybody. You know, happy Friday. You know, unbelievable volatility. We talked about it. We'll talk more about it. Taz, how you doing? Logan, Hundi, Oscar. We have Indonesia, Liverpool. <laughs> Somebody watching while driving from Virginia to Georgia. Okay, we have Indiana, Manchester. My grandmother was from Manchester. Aristo is asking, what about the Fed meeting on the 14th? All I can say about that right now is holy shit. <laughs> we'll talk about it. So we have Romania, Belgium, and the emergency Fed meeting on Monday. Okay, folks, let's go to your market update. We're going to call this the love bug. As in, we want to have love, but, you know, this market is bugging us, especially during this Valentine's Day season in the United States. <laughs> so let's dive into something about token metrics. Sick of volatility? Sick of having to figure out where Bitcoin and Ethereum are going? Well, on token metrics, one of our newsletters publishes every week a list of four or five small altcoins, right? That had high token metrics ratings. Token metrics ratings are determined by our artificial intelligence and machine learning system. Now, as you can see from this graphic on the left are the names of the tokens, Leo tokens in there. I believe one of our newsletters is covering their Super Bowl commercial. The American football championship is also this weekend. So it gives you the name of the token, the grade, and the return on investment that you had for the prior week. So while we're all getting chopped up, all right, token metrics customers are actually making money in small altcoins because our AI can identify these things and you can see these coins on our ratings page. Now you might be asking, gee, Bill, how come you don't tell us about these things? Well, I would love to tell you about it, but that's for token metric subscribers. Oh, wow. Look at that. Perfectly on cue. As soon as I said that, I can give you a token metrics 30% off coupon on any annual plan or upgrade. Okay. You can use the code love 30 L U V as in victory 30, uh, 30. Love 30. The coupon is valid for February 11th through the 21st. So if you want to know what to do during the Fed meeting and you need a little artificial intelligence help along with our human analytics team, well, don't just stand there. Get yourself a coupon. Get yourself a subscription. All right. While we're running this 30% off. All right. Truth be told. You know, I was kind of instrumental in getting this for you guys, right? Because, you know, if you're going to make money in crypto, I think you got to do it now, especially with things like the Fed meeting and whatnot coming up. So love 30 for 30% off tokenmetrics.com. Okay, now back to, let's go to, let's go to the comments. Bill, can you get us 30% off BTC? Hey, man, be careful. Be careful what you wish for, right? 
wake up after this Fed meeting. I don't know. I wasn't counting on that. Okay, Samuel says, Bill, I'm shorting 2X at 42K. Is this the right move at this condition? All right, well, I can't provide investment advice, okay? There is a rationale to do a tactical short trade with this Fed meeting, all right? So, you know, I'm not opposed to that. Uh, I would prefer to buy the dip, but, you know, I'm not privy to what the Fed's going to do. So that's what I can say about that. We have, you know, Nebraska, India, right? Okay, we have a crypto island in Greece, okay? And Driftless Crypto reminds us that GBTC, that's the Ethereum Bitcoin Trust, is selling at a discount. So that's a good point. You want to buy Bitcoin lower than where it is right now, that particular trading product, you know, because it's not that popular anymore, is actually trading below the value of the Bitcoin it holds. So an entity that holds Bitcoin is actually trading below what the Bitcoin's worth. Now, that could be what's called a value trap, all right? So be careful with that. But, you know, if you are looking to pick up, you know, a trading instrument that is offering BTC at a theoretical lower price than it is right now, that's something to look at. Personally, I might look elsewhere like Galaxy Digital or Coinbase stock if you're looking for index exposure to crypto, all right? So Routine Chi says the, the Fed meeting is behind closed doors. We won't know anything until March. Okay. Appreciate that. We have Amsterdam, Missouri, and London. All right. Let's talk about fear. Okay. Logan wants to know, was the dip from yesterday the one we were looking for? Yeah, it was up until they announced this weird Fed meeting. So, uh We'll have to wait and see how the markets react, say, over the weekend. Now, I'm going to go through my theory in a minute on how I think particularly Ethereum is going to behave. So let's check it out. So we have VIX. That's the fear index and legacy. So it's not too high. It's not real high and it's not real low. It's kind of in the middle of where it's been, you know, say, over the last, you know, six months. So you know, fear was a lot higher and it makes sense, right? I mean, you know, inflation's at seven, interest rates are at zero. So most likely what that means to me is that the Fed's going to meet in February. They're going to discuss raising rates and printing less money. There may even be a rate hike on the 14th. You know, just because the meeting is behind closed doors, doesn't mean they can't raise rates that day. Nobody remembers this because it's just, you know, so far gone. But, you know, the Fed used to see economic data that pointed strongly one way or the other, and they would move the Fed funds rate that day. Now, how much money they print probably requires a meeting and a press conference. But I would think that the market would actually be relieved or at least less spooked if they met on the 14th and say did 25 basis points instead of 50, right? So they could show that they were doing something. But most likely the equity market and the bond market are going to assume that they could announce a rate hike just kind of on the fly. That doesn't seem to be Jerome Powell's style. So what's my net takeaway, right? We're going to watch the yield on the U.S. 10-year note bond, right? Okay, rates up in an orderly fashion, crypto okay. Rates vertical, bad. Okay, so 10 you notes sitting around 2%. It's most likely going to go through 2% or sit roughly around it. You know, if it goes to 220, 2.2%, that's going to be a problem for crypto. So, yeah, there are things to be afraid of. But at the end of the day, folks, inflation's at 7 Rates are at zero. Rates are going up. The question is, you know, really, are they going to turn the printing press off tomorrow and crash everything? Probably not. There probably has to be some gradual nature of that. So crypto may be choppy. It may be a market of cryptos. You may have to pick which crypto 
you know, you want to play in. Okay, so I'm still not opposed to buying a dip, right? And I'm not a big fan of Bitcoin in front of 45K, right? I prefer to buy something else. Okay, so that's why you want to figure out what altcoin you want. That's why you get your token metrics 30% off coupon so you can figure out, hey, how do I make money in crypto even if it's weird and choppy? Now, let's talk about Bitcoin. So I wanted a dip. I wanted the thing to just kind of crack, right? Dip to 43 or even 41. But my God, they made a new high yesterday. I was like, what are these guys doing? That has created a rather awful looking stochastics picture where price made a new high, but stochastics made a lower high and they turned over. Hey, that's not a good scene. Chart wise, it's not, you know, I can try to predict certain things, but you know, I can't predict everything. I got to react in this case, I'm looking at this and one of two things is going to happen. Bitcoin's going to sit at 43 and there'll be a flash dip to 41, or you'll just wake up Monday and everyone will be freaking out. All right. My hope is that Bitcoin just sort of chops around 43. That would be constructive. That would allow the stochastics picture to sort of calm down. Okay. That was the Bitcoin futures contract that I just did. Bitcoin futures. All right. Just as a reminder, Bitcoin futures have a, has a gap at 41K. So I was hoping 43 was going to hold yesterday. It actually did. But you can't discount a gap. That you can't you can't say that they won't fill this gap at 41 in Bitcoin. <laughs> There's a Fed meeting coming up that we didn't know about, and the short-term picture is awful. So that could be a you know, that could be your dip buying opportunity. Because I still believe it's kind of now or never for the rest of February. All right, let's talk about Ethereum. Let's talk about why I still think any dip will be short-lived. This is a graph from a service called SKU. What it does is it shows you where options markets traders are active. So without giving you this huge options market lesson, the histogram shows you where, you know, the options market, what strike prices it's called or just what prices in the crypto market, bulls and bears are battling it out, right? And as you can see by the graph, right? 3,000 is a spot where options traders in the derivatives markets have placed a lot of bets. Now that can mean <clears throat> that prices don't really move much away from 3,000. So you know, if it goes to 3,000 and goes to 3,250, it might fail and go back to 3,000. Or if ETH goes to 2,850, it might turn around and come back to 3,000. Now, personally, I was hoping for ETH moving from three to the next big level at four, but I'm okay with ETH holding three, right? I'm, I'm okay with that. I know there's a gap below in Bitcoin, Right, but I would actually be very encouraged if there was a whole bunch of gymnastics off this Fed meeting, and at the end of the day, ETH was still holding three. Right, ETH holds three K. I think it can be constructive. Now, if it doesn't, and the Fed wrecks it all, okay, well, that's outside the purview of technical analysis. For the moment, I'm okay with this market because of this open interest at three K in Ethereum. Right. Open interest, meaning that's where they're mixing it up. So those levels can be really sticky, right? Now, of course, I would love it if the Fed did something where they said, okay, we raised rates and they were very clear about what they were going to do in the future. Because what markets really hate is uncertainty, right? So if the Fed was like, okay, we had a meeting, right? Or we announced this, or we're going to do this in March. I would imagine if there's no immediate rate hike on the 14th, the market might consider that constructive. Either way, if ETH can hang around 3K, then the market is okay. Although dips may be scary, right? 
Now, a, a, a tweet from Benjamin Cohen, who's sort of summing it up quite well. He says, I wonder if the world is paying attention to the fact that Bitcoin is up today following a, you know, 7% inflation number whilst the stock market is not performing well. So two things about this. <clears throat> Frequently, when you brag about crypto outperformance, a lot of times the market can humble you. Okay, so this guy's really smart, but I like his point, right? Considering that number yesterday, uh, we were expecting a dip, but everybody seemed to get totally hysterical. Like, folks, we, we know all this already. We know rates are going up, and we know inflation's 7%. Okay. You know, the politicians are the ones who woke up yesterday, and everybody got all upset, and then Benjamin Cohen is noting, well, for what? Why is everybody upset? <laughs> right? So my net thesis is, yes, this adds a lot of uncertainty, right? That I can't really control over a weekend. But that's why I brought out that options market analysis for ETH at 3,000. ETH at three is good. Now, a few announcements. Uh, we're going to do a live stream at 4.15 Eastern time in the U.S. Uh, or 9.15 UPC time for our friends overseas. All right, so this company called Trading Battle is going to have me and Mehdi uh, basically do trading ideas, enter the ideas, and, you know, they'll be good. We'll talk about some stuff for that night. Might actually be able to, like, day trade on the stream. But most importantly, what we're going to do is we're going to set positions that we're going to hold for the next couple days, and we're going to talk about why, right? So the reason these guys like having us on is because, you know, we're just not a bunch of guys with a five-minute chart. We're analysts. So the last time we did this, it worked out. It worked out good. You know, we were able to make a really big donation to St. Jude's Cancer Research. So whatever profits we make in the play account, you know, the person with the most profits gets to pick which charity they donate to. So it's a lot of fun, right? It's it's sort of like the token metrics live stream uh, with some PL attached to it. All right. So for better or for worse, token metrics versus token metrics, February 15th, 415 Eastern Time, a special live stream. Okay. You can definitely, you know, go to the site. Uh, and make sure you have alerts turned on on our site because the, the stream will be, you know, shown on their site and ours on YouTube. So please be sure and check that out. Naturally, you want to have a subscription to Token Metrics so you might be able to see which coins we're going to be looking at maybe in advance. So I can tell you right now, especially that's going to be, that's going to be right after the closed door Fed meeting. I mean, how much more intrigue do you need? And the first thing I thought of when I saw that Fed meeting, I was like, holy shit, thank God I have Tokenmetrics AI because I may need to lean on that, right? Because of the Fed uncertainty, right? Like, you know, charts are out the window potentially when that kind of stuff's going on. So I will be using AI. I will be using my charts and we will be talking about it. So tune in for that. By the way, did I mention that we're running a 30% off coupon? Yes, I did. I know. All right, folks, that's the market update. I think it comes down to support in Bitcoin at 41K if it goes down, right? And it comes to 3,000 in ETH as support if the market goes sideways, okay? Now, let's see. Let's see what people are looking for if there's any requests in the stream. So I can maybe help some people out because I can blah, 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 blah about all kinds of stuff and then have people change, you know, the market has a different idea headed into this Fed meeting, you know, and I appreciate, you know, that it's closed doors, but, but still, that doesn't mean the market can't, I don't know, be nervous and choppy, almost the worst environment for technical analysis, to be honest with you. All right. So let's see what we got. 
All right. So Javier from Mexico wants to know, are we going down? Uh, I think we're going to chop around. And I think, you know, ETH hanging around 3,000 is important. Okay. Cosmos ecosystem update. Uh, stay tuned with token metrics. All right. We do that on our deep dives and our premium customer webinar. Okay. AVAX or Solana. All right. Let's check in with what's going on with both of these coins. Let me get my screen shared here. Oh, somebody asking about uh, XRP. I saw XRP is back in our indices, right? Binance and Kraken. Now, I talked to our quant guys about it, all right? And they said, well, yes, they're in there. But, you know, I don't know if you want to get massively excited about it yet. But I am really interested in the fact that our AI is picking up on XRP. Okay. So awful stochastics picture for Solana. I wanted 110 dull. That, that, that did not happen. Okay. So I think you have support in Solana at either 100 or 95. Okay. So that's what that's what Solana looks like. You know, obviously not thrilled that this thing just crashed, but like I said, it may be crashing into support. Right? Now, in terms of Solana versus Avalanche, we would love to have, you know, big Solana fans like Multicoin Capital on the show so they could tell us why Solana is better than Avalanche in their opinion. Okay, as you know, at token metrics, we're really more into Avalanche. So here's here's the dip today because it obviously did very well yesterday. Okay. So what we're looking at is, you know, there was a prior ceiling before the giant give up trade around 87. Now, it's an unpredictable world, folks, but I want to buy good projects at good entry points. So this thing was at, you know, it, 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 the high yesterday was 95, supports at 87. So from a chart point of view, it looks like Avalanche has better support. That's the way it looks right now. I think the fundamental case for Avalanche is, uh, is superior. You know, unless, you know, unless... <laughs> I, I, unless the Solana guys want to come on TV and tell us about it, right? So, you know, feel free to get on, you know, Kyle Tsunami's Multicoin Capital. Feel free to get on his Twitter or anybody connected to Solana and have him come on the show and talk to Medi. Now, let's talk XRP. Let's, let's just like, you know, see if there's anything here worth looking at. Okay, so I guess, you know, XRP is not trading very well today. Okay, now XRP is doing what Avalanche is doing. So obviously, you know, it's coming off, right? But it's back at a prior ceiling from January 13th. So if XRP holds 80 cents, right? If XRP holds 80 cents, XRP might actually start going up again. In other words, what I'm interested in on token metrics, and I swear, if you're into XRP or you watch BitBoy, I mean, BitBoy is obviously really into XRP, right? You know, and BitBoy also, you know, has an affiliate deal. You know, he, he has, you know, I think BitBoy.com slash deals. You know, he has a token metrics affiliation for us. Now, he doesn't know this, but you know, he's been talking XRP for a while, but I'm going to be really interested to know if XRP continues to show up in our indices. Right? Is it a one or two day thing or, you know, does XRP turn around, start trending? Who knows? Now, I don't want to create false hope, but I will tell you this. When you have a legal or regulatory issue, 
The only reason I would get involved and get long <clears throat> is if our AI likes it day after day after day. So maybe our AI is picking up on something. Maybe there's going to be like stable coin regulation, right? And that might create a new use case for XRP. If stable coins are no good, then maybe something like XRP could, could be valuable. I mean, you can go to BitBoy's channel and get the whole rundown on XRP. But the bottom line is, you know, I'm interested. Like I, I'm waking up every day and I've been looking to see if XRP shows up because from a TV point of view, you know, if there's a reason to talk about it, I'm going to talk about it, right? Because, you know, that's, that's a very popular item out there in the crypto world. All right. So Reddy Chala says ETH to 10K by 2022. Sir, I, I so hope so. All right. I, I think it's going to be sell in May and go away. Right. <laughs> and I think that's like go away for a couple of months. <laughs> so I would love to be wrong about that. I, I work for a crypto company. One of the reasons why I think you got to get your token metric subscription is because I think if, if there's a time to make money, it's now. Right. Okay. So Axia. Right. This is also featured in a lot of our indices. All right. So our indices have liked this for a while. Right. And as you can see, right, when this thing goes up, it just sits and then it starts going up again. So my guess would be, you know, Axie is probably going to head to 1120. Because once this thing is an object in motion, it stays in motion. Okay. Now, there's probably going to be profit takers at 1120. But whatever this is, people like it. And our, a, our AI is picking up on the resumption of the uptrend. In other words, our AI is assuming that what's going on now looks just like this, right? You were in a sideways range, right? And then you just took off. So our AI is assuming, you know, history is repeating itself. So, I mean, if you were hodling this, you know, I guess you just go right on hodling. Fern says, love me some dot. Let's take a look at Polkadot, see what's happening. By the way, folks, uh, we're doing a lot more custom TA uh, these days. So feel free to lean on that like button, okay? Now, unfortunately, in Polkadot, we have this rather grotesque looking false breakout. <laughs> okay. In other words, I was kind of hoping that, you know, they would do all their gymnastics and do all the damage off CPI and be done with it. All right. Now it looks like Polkadot didn't make it through the trend line. All right. So, I mean, I wanted to buy the dip, but I also wanted to use good risk management. And I don't know if you can get too excited about, about Polkadot until it's like firmly above, say, $20.50. So, I mean, of course, the market's going to be shitty today. You know, nobody, everybody's going to be adjusting their positions going into the Fed meeting, right? Because nobody was ready for it. So, yeah, I mean, it doesn't look good now, but the chart picture can change like, I don't know, Monday morning. Right. So who knows what they do over the weekend? All right. Let's see what else we got here. We got Vo people asking for Joe, Phantom, and Vulcan. Let's go to like the Metaverse DeFi list that I like. Let's take a look at Phantom. All right. Phantom is interesting. You know, I was looking for support at around 207 and i think if they really blow it out you could be looking at support and phantom at 190. you know in my mind like i said unless the fed goes totally on the warpath the question remains right what do you want to do on a dip now this dip was substantially more inconvenient than i anticipated but i still think you know, if, if altcoins 
are going to, I still think altcoins have a legit shot of doing better than Bitcoin if the market goes up. The question is, what are the support levels? In Phantom, it's 207 or 190. Okay, Vulcan, it's right here. All right, so Vulcan is trying to keep it together, right? Okay, there's a GAN support level right here. Kind of right at 13. So if Vulcan is above 13, it's okay. I can't help but think that the metaverse doesn't care whether Fed funds are at, you know, 50 basis points or 1%. I mean, I know if the Fed is going to completely shut off printing money, that's, you know, that's the hammer time for the metaverse. But I mean, realistically, folks, what you're looking for is support. You're looking for support and then you're waiting for the market to go, oh, okay, inflation's at seven, rates were at zero. I mean, Vulcan two days ago, okay, made a high at 16 and now it's at 13 and there's additional support around 11. So I don't want to tell you that charts don't mean anything. Of course, they always mean something, right? You want to find your entry levels and get your good projects at your good entry levels. If you haven't done anything yet, I don't think you have to do anything until, you know, after this meeting is at least over, right? Okay, someone's looking at Cardano. Let's take a look at Cardano. By the way, nobody said anything about my red jacket. What's up with that, people? This is uh, for Valentine's Day. It's also from one of my heroes, the Notorious B.I.G. So if anybody follows me on Twitter, they know I'm really into this guy. So <clears throat> we're sort of, we were sort of built the same way. And I do freestyle T.A. the way he did freestyle lyrics. So this is my Notorious B.I.G. jacket. <clears throat> which conveniently happens to work out well for our Valentine's Day promotion. All right. <clears throat> so Cardano, you know, falling out of bed. All right. And to me, this looks like, you know, the opposite of what Cardano was doing, say, in early February or mid-February, like on the 7th. You know, there was a lot of FOMO in Cardano up to, say, $1.20. Right. This is like a linear regression channel on an 89 minute chart. Okay. So if you're watching this a month from now, this may not be relevant, obviously. But, you know, sometimes what we see in Cardano is we see these blowouts, right? Like, you know, here is the sky is falling, right? You know, they, they took it down and they pressed a dollar and then it goes straight up, right? And then, of course, up here, you know, it's going to the moon and beyond up here at $1.25, and then it comes off. All right. So if ETH is holding 3K, unless there's something wrong that I don't know about, I don't know why everyone's puking out their Cardano. I don't know why people would puke out layer ones if, if ETH can be stable around 3,000. I mean, ETH might go below there, but based on that options theory, you know, it it's probably going to come back to 3000. So, you know, I have to respect the fed, but honestly, what, what is everyone so upset about? <laughs> we, we know all this shit already. Seriously. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. Oh yeah. Trader Joe forgot about that. Let's do some Joe. I'm interested to see what's going on here. All right. So, I mean, one of our suspicions with Trader Joe, even though, you know, conceptually we like it, we were sort of wondering if people were going to sell Trader Joe to pay their taxes, possibly, because they've got a yield farming play. 
So, I mean, it's got a head and shoulders bottom formation, but, you know, it's not doing anything. It's not moving. Now, nothing's moving. So, maybe the way you draw Joe is like teacup and handle. That's probably the better way to look at this, right? Now, what's teacup and handle? Well, it, it, it can be a reversal formation. It can be. So, it, it could be bullish Joe, but here's the trick. When it comes to the handle, if the handle's a nightmare. Like, I'm not even going to tell you that I can tell you when a handle is over. Okay, what I can tell you is once the thing reverses, it usually does quite well. You know, it could go up to two and a half dollars, but if everybody's selling this token to pay their taxes, it's wait and see mode. I can definitely see a case for an eventual move up, but is there an immediate move up without a catalyst? Eh, I don't know, right? I don't know. Okay, IOTX. I also see people asking for crypto.com. Okay, so this is the crypto.com chart. Realistically, this is the eight hour. So, you know, you got a lot of resistance up here in this. You know, I know when something runs from 32 cents to 50, that the urge to chase it is, is, is robust. Okay. Uh, I, I think the way you want to do this and the way you want to play all of these smaller coins, now that there's this fed thing going on is you want to let these things just let them trade, let them trade and then see, look for green candles like the bulls are taking control. Like for example, you know, right here, right? You can see bulls buying dips and then they came in and decided they want to pay higher prices. All right. Now, if you get involved here, it's almost like the opposite. It's like sellers sold the rally and now people are willing to get out at lower prices. Okay. So you think it's going to break out, it gets the resistance. And now everybody seems to want to bail in front of the Fed number. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to zero. There's a lot of support at 48 cents. You know, one thing to think about in crypto is over the weekend is like, you know, do, do stock market players short crypto over the weekend in fear of the Fed, right? And then if the Fed doesn't turn out to be the end of the world, are they all going to wind up covering next week? That seems to be the MO, right? Everybody in equities gets short crypto and then, you know, they either break the market or they get squeezed out. You know, either way, let these things trade between now and the Fed because, you know, a Fed meeting was not a part of really any calculation on what's going on with, you know, with crypto, right? All right. So another YouTuber thinks that Bitcoin can still go down the 35K or even 20 something K, what do you think? Okay. So my focus short term has been just that short term, right? In other words, if you look at Bitcoin long term, right? So if you go like Benjamin Cohen style and you want to look at, say, you know, big picture Bitcoin. So if you, if you look at big picture Bitcoin, right? I had one guy, one of our premium customers ask, you know what? He's like, I don't really want to get involved in Bitcoin until it goes back down to the 200 week moving average. <laughs> the 200 week moving average in Bitcoin is like, I don't know. It's like, 20K, I believe. So there's a GAN line at 25, right? And there's support at 36. Now, why am I not talking about this now? Well, because unless the Fed's going to wreck the world, I'm still holding out hope that February will be positive for crypto. 
even if it's a market of cryptos. Now, I haven't talked to you about what happens probably starting in March, right? Probably going to get a top in this thing in March and sell in May away is no joke, okay? It's no joke, meaning Bitcoin could go, you know, you could, you could pick your level, right? Go to 34, 25, 20, right? In other words, risk assets are eventually going to have a problem with, say, the Fed or geopolitics or something we don't know about, right? I was kind of hoping that things would be positive for the rest of February, right? In other words, I don't think anybody's really buying ETH. I don't think anybody understands what Avalanche is really capable of, right? And I think this Metaverse NFT trade is still totally underrated. Like art and stocks are not correlated. So can, can Bitcoin go down after the end of February? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But the trade is, you know, what do you want to do right now? Like, How do you make money if you've got, say, two weeks? Like, remember when I had that slide uh, about the small coins for token metrics that were up over the last five days? You know, every week in a newsletter we have, we publish those five coins. Now, I know that's looking back, but it's a lesson that on Token Metrics' rating page, if you got to make money in crypto, okay, that's how you do it, even if Bitcoin isn't performing well, right? I, I don't think Bitcoin's the answer. I think if Bitcoin gets above 45, right, I think it could, but I mean, it's, it's probably going to stop at 48. I think if there's a rally, it could be bigger in ETH or Avalanche. So hopefully that, that answers the question. So we have VRA. Now we got some VRA fans out there. Okay, let's find VRA, see if I got a better history anywhere. Okay, so again, you know, you have resistance up here, right? You think it's going to be okay on support. And then they announced an, an emergency Fed meeting. And all of a sudden, you got people who FOMO'd in up here trapped, right? This is VRA eight hour. Okay, this is what I mean by love bug, right? So you love the market. But, you know, it's, it's bugging you because one minute you think it's okay. And the next minute you're dealing with all this choppy uncertainty. So the best case scenario is for choppy. And the best answer in veracity might be, hey, you know, this isn't really doing much. This may just be choppy action. Let's hope it's that, right? There's nothing wrong with the market chopping around. It's actually one of the most painful things for both bulls and bears where the market just kind of goes, oh, you know, I don't know what to do. So I don't know what to do is not up or down. Okay. But it is a little bit of wait and see, and you don't want to be diving in unless you get a great deal, right? Like Bitcoin at 41 K kind of thing. Right. So let's just see how ETH trades at 3000. I mean, that's going to be, that's going to be the ultimate thing that determines whether or not it's all going to hold or not. Okay. Somebody asking for an entry point for RNDR. Okay. So what is a good entry point for RNDR? Okay, so I might draw it two and a half. It's currently trading at three. Okay, let's see what I can get on the daily chart, if anything. Right, so you're either looking at two and a half or $2.14 if they blow it out. In other words, I think when it comes to this metaverse stuff, even though I was really pumped up about this, because I thought this, you know, thought this was going to hold and be normal 
assuming the inflation number was as expected. It was. It's just that the political reaction to it wasn't. So the Fed has to act like they're acting or they have to act or whatever. But if this is the case, then this thing could get slammed. And if it comes back down to the bottom of this linear regression band and prior support at 214, I think that's where you, know, you would want to get involved. All right. Okay, one more. We've got BNX. Okay, this is interesting. All right, so based on how the market has been trading, it's definitely interesting to see this coming off the lows. But I think realistically, right, the the prior ceiling at 30 at 36, all right? is actually still acting as a ceiling, right? They gapped it up to 44, right? They stopped people out who were probably negative and bag holders probably unloaded. So when it comes to BNX, you probably want to see, I don't know, a prior resistance level like 30 becomes support. You want to see, you know, you want to see support hold and you want to see bulls come in and get involved post-Fed, right? Post-Fed. Um, can you look at Ethereum Classic? I'm glad you asked. Ethereum Classic is actually showing up inside the token metrics indices. Okay? I don't know what's going on over there. It does seem a little bit overextended, right? If you look at like the eight-hour chart, but if you look at the daily right? If you look at the daily, right? This thing is trying to press through resistance at 38. So support is at 34, resistance is at 38, right? And if there's something fundamental going on here and it breaks above 38, then maybe you can get excited. But again, I don't know that I'm in some huge hurry to buy something that's gone from 22 to 36 in front of a Fed meeting. So, you know, I'd be like, okay, well, if they show me the breakout above 38, then that's when, you know, you can, you can get excited at that point. Okay, we have Immutable X. All right, anybody who's here, uh, please hit the like button, right? If you like the content, give us a like. Okay, Immutable X. Okay, you get these spikes, right? Like, I know we like this project, but man, when you see these like spikes up like this and everybody's selling, man, when it comes to small altcoins, I swear I don't like that. I absolutely don't like that. You know, that means people are like headed for the door. Now that said, right, if we look at like a tactical chart, Right. If if you believe in immutable X long term and you believe bag holders just sold everything, maybe immutable X is something you look at down at, you know, like 235. Right. Like if they crash it to support, you know, then you look at it. And look at it means you wait for bulls to show you the money. Right. Remember how I tell you, like if you can buy, it's not a bull market. Unless you can buy a dip and make money. Well, in Immutable X, where is there evidence that you could buy a dip and make money? Uh, right now, it's nowhere. Right? You try to buy a dip, right? It goes up, but then it comes right back down and makes a new low. So when you get that, you know, when you get that, okay, you know, let's go. Right? But that's not going to come into play until after the Fed. All right. So let's conclude. Let's go back to the bond market. Yes, we're going to do actually live legacy. So the good news is, okay, the yield on the 10-year note has stopped rising and has fallen. All right. Now, probably the reason it's falling 
is because everyone's freaking out, okay, in equities. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like everyone's losing their mind because they're afraid the Fed is going to make some kind of major decision that's going to, you know, basically end money printing. So this is what, this is eight hour equities. Let's do eight hours. So this is eight hours, S and P futures, right? And they ran into resistance twice. And this was the level where it cracked from. So, I mean, people are going to freak out in equities, right? This is the risk over the weekend in crypto that everybody just goes, oh shit, you know, it's going to blow up on Monday. Therefore I have to sell crypto. So, you know, there goes Ethereum right, right into my 3000 level and everybody is selling it. But that, you know, we talked about this at the start of the show because this stochastics picture is terrible because these goofballs, instead of dipping it like I wanted them to, or like they should have done, these monkeys made a new high and then it fell apart and the chart, it just looks terrible, right? So my hope is that ETH, you know, if it goes below 3K, it'll stop and come back after the Fed meeting. But who knows what these, you know, who knows what these apes are going to do over the weekend, right? Right? All we can do is like hope for some level of stability and then do any dip buying if appropriate post-Fed. Hey, tune in. Let's go, uh, let's go back to the deck, right? go back to the deck for just a brief minute. You know, if, if you don't know what to do and you're looking for some like really heavy duty guidance, okay? Obviously you can get your token metric subscription with your code LOVE30, right? But you can also tune in where me and Medi are actually gonna do actionable PL trading ideas in the trading battle on Feb 15 at 4.15 Eastern time. We could be the most watched men in crypto if the Fed thing is a shit show. Seriously. <laughs> I'm wondering if this is like our big chance. <laughs> really. Because, uh, you know, many has a lot of really good ideas because he takes a totally different approach to the market than I do. So don't miss that. Turn on the alerts bell. Okay. S pin said, VIX just hit 29. Here we go. Yeah, you know, this we could do like a live action market update today. Normally the market blows up as soon as I get done talking. Okay. At, this way, at least we can sort of look at it while it's happening. Let's see what we get on like a four hour chart of VIX. Is the equity market equity market's not open all day like crypto is? All right. So here's what the equity market does when it loses its mind. It goes above, you know, VIX here around 30. Right. This is 32. Right. Uh, so your screen this is what. Shared. Oh, my screen's not shared. Oops. All right. Let's try sharing the screen. Okay. So here's VIX on a four hour chart. All right. And what VIX likes to do when it freaks out is it goes up here and takes out the top of this band. Right. So here's VIX losing their mind here. And here's VIX losing their mind here. So, you know, I don't know. It, it's Valentine's Day. But honestly, in equities, it looks like it's effort Friday. Uh, I have to get out because I don't know what's going to happen next week. Okay, so that's going to then fear through the roof because who the hell was expecting an emergency Fed meeting? And undoubtedly, the investment banks, right, are going to have inside color because they've got contacts, you know, they've got contacts who either know what's going on directly or they have a good way to follow what goes on in, say, the junk bond market or other markets to be like, hey, we're seeing warning signals. Matter of fact, somebody was asking for war stories on a prior stream. You know, I was in the equities department, okay? We would get a phone call 
from, say, the interbank lending department where you would lend between banks. And people would be like, no one's lending money to Lehman Brothers or AID or Merrill Lynch. They'd be like, you know, the size falling over here. And then the equity guys would take advantage of that because it took people a while back then to figure out what was happening. Now, undoubtedly, some sort of research is going on about what's going to happen with the Fed through legacy. So let me just give you something to put on your watch list, right? There's this HYG, okay? So this, what a lovely picture this is, right? <laughs> These are junk bonds. So this is a junk bond chart, right? So as you can see, people in junk bonds are getting hysterical. Now, why is that? Why is that relevant to crypto? Well, because, you know, the hysterics might end here. They might. Okay. But if they don't, then, you know, there's something wrong with the system because higher interest rates really hurt, you know, they hurt bonds, obviously, right? Rates up, bonds down. But if the most speculative bonds out there or the altcoins of the bond market get totally wrecked, right? Then, you know, the Fed is on the warpath. So everyone's going to be upset. Now, what is the argument not to get upset? Is there an argument to not get upset? <sighs> yeah, sure, there is, right? But you have to respect the Fed, right? The the good news is once the meeting is over and they know the Fed has probably made a decision, right? It'll all be priced in by the time the Fed's done. So this is the bearish trade I expected in mid-March and it looks like they want to do it. They want to do it now. All right. So let's wait until the point of max fear, right? That's either now or Monday morning, most likely. And then we take it from there. All right. Valentine's Day is enough reason for me to lose my mind, says Stephen Watson. Dean says BTC dump during the live stream. Interesting. Well, that could be interesting. You know, maybe I have some gigantic hedge fund that saw the gap at 41K and the resistance here on the 89 minute chart. I doubt they're seeing it on my screen, on my stream, although that would be nice. Uh, these guys have got their own charts and they know that there's a gap down there. So I was like, well, are they going to do it or not do it? And now, yeah, it looks like they're going to do it. Gaps get filled, right? And Fred free, Fed freak out is on. So if you're stressed out about Valentine's Day, or you're stressed out about crypto, make sure you tune in here on Monday. The trading battle, okay? Market update, stay tuned with token metrics. All right, folks, that's it for me today. I'm your host, Bill Noble. We'll see you on Monday.